Welcome back, geeks and gamers, to This Is Horseplay Live. Now, today is the 24th, not the 23rd, and it is Friday, but it's okay. Twitch was being very, very derpy yesterday, so, but we still want to get the show out to you. Today's episode, episode 45, entitled Hashtag WSC Atlanta, which is Walker Stalker Con recap, and we are going to do a TWD Family Musings. I know it just uh, it was like a weird title name. But, of course, as a quick reminder, just for everybody that would like to know, all the intro and outro music is provided by Technoax, and that's Techno with a K. Um, guys and gals, ladies and gentlemen, all boys of all girls and all the blah, 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 of all ages. I was going to say that's so good, too. As always, I am welcomed. Welcomed. I am joined <laughs> by Yogi Zilla, the man himself. What's up, big guy? Wow. What's up? <laughs> I was gonna say something like, you know, like uh um who's that uh the, the that wrestler he came out and he was like one and other children of all ages, this is Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> Twitch issues, dude. What's going on? Uh, I don't know, uh yesterday I know a lot a bunch of people were were tweeting about it. Some people were saying that the videos that if they were were able to connect and get a stable connection, their videos were out of sync. There's some bad juju going on around. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, uh, of course, the partners didn't have any issues because they have a priority or whatever in the bandwidth into Twitch, I'm sure. Uh, and then, I guess, depending on what your local server was, what, what server you're connected to, that might affect it too. But yeah, we just decided to, not to buy, mess with it because we were already like 30 minutes in trying to troubleshoot it. And it's like, all right, we'll just reschedule it. So now we're un- under the gun because... Uh, I'm still recovering from uh, Walker Stalker Con, and then tomorrow we got Time Wyman Tea Time. We just had a new show premiere on the network tonight, which uh, will be weekly, and then it'll, you know, it won't always be weekly. It'll be here and there, but it'll be on Fridays before uh, before Retro Friday. So I mean, it's gonna be we're gonna have very packed weekends, uh, which is good because I'm gonna be MIA to an extent the next couple of weeks. So it's gonna be rough on me. So having other shows. Uh, on our audio feed and on Twitch and stuff, it'll be good. And so I'm gonna say that being said, Twitch plus, plus, please <laughs> stop fucking us over. <laughs> we yeah, did, we were talking to and 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 everybody. We were tr- we wanted to do this show so bad last night, and then Twitch is just being so derpy. I mean, I had friends that were pissed off, screaming at me because Twitch wasn't working. I'm like, what do you want me to do, man? I can't even do my talk show. So, but we are here. We are here. This is a huge weekend, guys, and there's a, there's one big reason why it's a huge weekend. We do want to let you guys know that one of our own, okay, Chris Gannon from the Gaming Death Podcast, he's going to be doing a charity stream tomorrow, October 25th. He'll be doing it for Extra Life stream. Uh, it's an Extra Life. It's to, to help the uh, Children's Miracle Network out. Um, there's a whole bunch of people doing it. So if you guys want to, if you want to check out what's going on, when he's going to actually start, hit uh, at Death of Nation on Twitter. If you guys want to know some you know, specifics and whatnot. And, of course, our friends at Waystone Games. You guys know we, we talk about Dawngate. I do. A lot. Um, and we just want to make sure that uh, they're doing streams tomorrow as well and Sunday. And... Um, uh, for those that watch the Sunday Dose, if you guys remember Thor, he's actually doing his 24-hour stream right now. So, um, and I, I, he's already, I think he's already raised a thousand dollars already, which is holy crap. He's been streaming for about 14 hours now, and he's raised a grand. So, thanks guys for for all your help. And you guys can donate to anywhere you want. It doesn't mean if you donate to Chris, it doesn't mean people at Waystone. It's everything's going to the same spot. So don't feel bad about donating one. I've donated five to one, like five to five different places. So, uh, um, just to help out and then help out everybody. So you guys can check that out. It's the Extra Life 2014. Um, we'll give you guys this one in chat. Um, you guys can go check that out. Please check that out. And it's the just extralife.org. Um, if you guys want to donate anytime, this is not just this weekend. I mean, you guys can donate. You know, five dollars. You know, um, if you do some donations with like, uh, if you like donate a, a dollar, or I think it's a dollar, 
uh, or five dollars with Waystone, they give you some cool perks for in-game stuff. Um, so, uh, but don't forget, I mean, there's a whole bunch of people doing it, and we just want to make sure that you guys know that Death, uh, Chris Gannon's going to be doing it from Gaming Death Podcast. As Yogi's still trying to chew and not show everybody, I'm just going to keep going. But you guys make sure that that um, you guys check any of the streams out. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Again, um, the the Waystone stream is going to be starting at nine. Uh, AM PDT. Uh, I don't. Do you know when when Chris is going to be starting? You can just shake your yes or head yes or no. Starting at uh, nine AM Eastern. Okay, so he's going to be three hours behind. So you guys go check him out. Um, go check those guys out. It's it's a really good cause. Um, not even thinking about it, I've I've donated twenty five already. So, uh, but I just want to make sure that you know this is for kids, guys, and this is what we do. You guys know me. I've streamed a little bit. Every chance I get, I talk about I want to help kids. So this is, you know, this is awesome for me. So if you guys do want to help out, make sure you guys go to, of course, theextralife.org. And just even if it's a buck, it's a dollar. Hey, it, everything helps. But if you, are, you guys new to show, if you guys are new to horseplay, welcome to our geeky sanctuary, Horseplay Live. We are, uh, of course, um, where geeks come to play. And nine times out of ten, we get in trouble a lot. Well, I do. Yogi, he's a saint. You know. Um, <laughs> but we are the flagship show right there on Geeky Antics Network Global, uh, which is Gang for short, and collaboration with AllGames.com. Um, our show covers the aspects of geek culture, focusing on indie games and strategy games, technologies, rants, social, social issues that geeks face every single day while playing. I said rants, but I'm going to say it again. Rants. We rant. We are the king of rants. <laughs> Seems like on this show. Was it rants or uh, getting thrown off topic? One or the other. A little bit of both, yeah. I like our rants, though. Those are fun. <laughs> <laughs> As you guys do well, see down... Except, except from when Obi uh, puts up half-naked women on the stream. And people write us nasty letters. Hey, that was on my stream. I didn't do it on Geek. I didn't do it on Horseplay. I did it on the Sunday Dose. That's mine. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. For those that don't like seeing hey, naked half women, just don't watch my show. Sorry. <laughs> I'll be blunt. <laughs> I don't want people to not come and see the show, but sorry. I'm a guy. <laughs> That's really how does excuse. How does Bud feel about it? Hmm. I don't, I don't have him on there anymore, though. I took them off since Mud joined the show. Okay. Good job. And she actually liked them, so... Mm -hmm. She thought they were cool. I sent them both copies. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll move on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> better, better we move on, though. That'd, that'd be the safest part. Um, you guys also noticed that when we, throughout the show, every show, no matter what it is, we shout out everybody everybody and their mama really um and you guys sometimes you guys ask us you know why are you guys shouting out so many people people are going to steal your viewers they're not stealing our viewers if we're not good enough to keep them so we shout out everybody no matter what because we love because you know the gang is all about community and collaboration that's why we have uh, you know, geekyantics.net. That's why we have all our communities on Steam and, and other places that we just want to collaborate with other people and just play video games with people. That's why we do what we do, just because of that. So Horseplay Live is every Thursday at 11 p.m. usually, <coughs> 8, 8 Pacific, Pacific, on Twitch channels Geeky Antics and Yogizilla, as I choke. Oh. <laughs> Tonight on the show, guys, I know last week we were kind of jumbled up and... You know, we were we were trying to, you know, Yogi was getting ready to go to Walker Stalker Con and, you know, saying, you know, I got to detect this and this. And we were going to have a trouble, but we are going to talk about Walker Stalker Con again. Yogi did a lot of things. I tried to call him one at one point and he goes, I can't talk right now. I'm still here. Wait, dude, it's 10 o'clock at night. You're still there. Yeah, I'm doing last minute interviews. Dude. <laughs> Go to sleep. <laughs> I can't. It was around, it was around the clock, man. <laughs> so so we, we have a lot of stuff to, um, from Walker Stalker, just from, you know, different, of course, highlights, zombie talk, rants to rave about uh, a bit. 
Um, and well, of course, we have some shout outs as well, of course. Uh, but thanks to all the cool zombies uh, that uh, that uh, everybody, that's not even my part, is it? That's your part, because I can't say thanks to all the zombies I met. <laughs> well, we, we met them as the network. I'm, yeah. I'm cutting... Yeah. Yeah. We, we extended the Geeky Antics family, the TWD family at uh, Walker Star Con Atlanta. And hopefully we can make it to, to more of the events. They're, they're fun. Well, like I said, next year will be a lot different. Okay. Yeah. We're going to do it up right now. And I'll tell everybody here. And I'm going to tell everybody here so that next year when my wife says, no, we can't, I'm going to show her this video. Okay, last, <laughs> I have it. I have it on my phone too. Recorded. Yes, you can go to Walker Stalker Con next year. Next year, my wife's or the boss is letting me go. So we're gonna try to do a big production. We're gonna try to get you know I'm gonna bring my whole computer set up down there and maybe even try to get a booth or try to get something that we can actually you know have some fun with and have multiple shows as geeky antics so that'd be something to look forward to it's a year from now so we got a lot of planning to do but as of right now we're gonna get into a little bit of news so this point obligatory news with yo Zilla. yes so you Sorry. guys remember <laughs> king's quest back in the days i mean it's not like it's so long ago. it feels like it's been forever but as uh you know, Roberta Williams did uh, the King's Quest and the Police Quest series. She did some other stuff. Well, now she's bringing back the point-and-click adventure games in a big way. Um, and and what the, one of the things they're doing to kind of make point-and-click adventure games more challenging but also less frustrating is they're getting rid of the whole aspect of aimlessly trying to combine items with actions until you get something that works. If, it, if, if the option doesn't work with the type of item, it's all contextual. It won't let you do it. It won't even let, let you a, attempt to do it. So there won't be this aimless clicking about and trying to mix and match stuff. But uh, so, yeah, you know, it, it's cool. It's, it's, it's like uh, the retro gaming, to, from what I see, is, is going so strong. And, uh, you know, point and click advantage. I joked before that it, they're, not, they're not viable in this climate, but apparently they still are. So I, I'm happy to see that. Uh, I also I wonder if FMV games will be back, where it's all pre-rendered cutscenes and whatnot. Uh, but <laughs> Obi showing off his dog. Oh, but uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, we'll report more details um, as as we become privy to them. I know uh, uh over at uh Gaming History One on One, Fred Rojas, aka Spiders Venom, has been keeping up with that, and uh, this it, is cool. That that kind of stuff excites me because. You know, a lot of t- a lot of times these older games are much more inspired in the new stuff. Um, another thing, uh, some Stitcher related news, podcasting stuff. Uh, after s- over seven years of bringing us uh, tons of wonderful audio experiences, uh, Stitcher, one of our favorite platforms for podcasts, has been acquired by Deezer. And I don't know much about Deezer. This is actually, honestly, the first time I've really heard about them uh, that I can recall. Um, but you know, old man memory, so whatever. But the promise is that, uh, you know, we're gonna now have access to over 180 countries, uh, in the as the, as these are integrated Stitcher into their ecosystem. So they're promising, you know, they they sent an email out, an email blast, and uh, they said they're gonna, they're gonna continue to update the Stitcher app and the website. So I'm excited to see where, where this goes. Um, last but not least, uh, there's a new Twitch for Android app. Uh, the beta app is version 3.1.0. Uh, that's currently in beta, beta testing. Pretty neat. I haven't had a chance to play with it too much, but... It works uh, good. Yeah, they, they definitely add a lot of polish. Uh, it's a lot more stable. That's more important because I was tired mm-hmm. of, of, of Twitch ca- crashing on both the, the iOS and Android. Um, but uh, it has a new settings menu that lets you turn on and off broadcasts. Um, broadcast titles. Uh-huh. Uh, the profiles have been revamped, which I think is a big thing. I think they don't give enough focus, enough attention to like user profiles and even offline channels. That's stuff that they still need to work on. But they improved the navigation and the viewing of user profiles, fixed a ton of bugs. You know, again, so less crashes and there's some other stuff too in there. 
Well, and they also too with uh, on some on some devices, um, like my the my Kindle, uh, some a lot of some of the tablets, you couldn't actually chat. You know how like uh, when you when you oh, have yeah. your, when you have your phone and you're read, you're looking at the video this way, and then you just turn your phone up, and then then the chat comes up comes up. A lot of those, I it, mine just were actually worked on my Kindle today, um, to where I just turned it and I could chat right in. I mean, I was happy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just so stupid. Yeah, a little nuances. Uh, yeah, that, that that's frustrating. <laughs> he brazier antics. Yeah. Oh, you saw that now. <laughs> well. So by the way, since we're gonna have a very casual show tonight, uh, you know, this is our man crushes and geek girls. We're not gonna go through the whole spiel. But if you have someone you'd like to be in on the show, or heck, you want to call in. Well, I'm, I'm combining two sections right now. OB. Go. Yeah. Doing. It's all you, buddy. But uh, you can call us in, uh, and you call connect with me on Skype, Yogi Zilla, or just look for Horseplay Live or Geeky Antics at, at uh, Gmail dot com. It'll come up on Skype as well. Um, yeah, and then you get to connect with us on Skype and and join the conversation. Like I said, it's gonna be pretty chill and rant. <laughs> Obi has a really huge coffee mug. That's a that's Num- a that's number crazy. one dad too, buddy. But yeah, if you have any suggestions, guys. Mad crushes or, or geek girls that you like on the show, let us know. But for now, we're going to share our geeks of the week, where we usually, you know, plug streamers, podcasters, authors, and, and other geeks we, le- we love. <laughs> we're shouting out the same. Go ahead. You're keeping the same one? No. Uh, we're oh, both, okay. we're, you're doing, just keep, you'll see who I'm talking. Just go. I have a feeling I know already. Well, I'm going to plug uh, Gaming Death. Uh, Right here on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash gaming death. Uh, you know, I got to shout out Chris, Gannon, and Gang uh, because they're doing um, two awesome podcasts now on the network. And this weekend, uh, by the time you hit us to this, it might have already passed, hopefully. For those live, it will be, it's today in about nine hours, Saturday, October 25th. Uh-huh. They're doing the uh, Extra Life uh, charity stream. And I think they already hit their first goal. And they're going for some stretch goals now. Uh, not anywhere near the level of Thor DG. But, oh, you come know. on, man. It's not, it's, not, it's not what it's about. It's not what it's about. I know, I know. I know. Don't, don't do I'm that. Just, I'm just joking. Right. Gotta but my, ruin my joke. No, it's, it's, gotta ruin it's, my joke. Yeah, it's a good joke, but it doesn't matter for, you know, for, you gotta think yeah, about not a, it. With, with, every little bit helps. Right. Every little bit helps. Well, and, and with gaming death, you know, with, with him being a part of the gang... Um, uh, with him being a part of the gang and everything, it's it's something that I'm proud of him too because he's he's part of us. He's part of our network. So I mean, go Chris. I mean, that's that's awesome. He's and he's already met his goal, which is which is awesome in the first place. But I am gonna put out another stream that's doing the same thing. But he's doing his right now, actually he's doing his a little bit early so he doesn't get into the get in the way of uh our uh, our Mr. Chris or any, anybody else that's doing it on Saturday. But we're going to go twitch.tv forward slash DG. Yeah, he was going to do it. You knew. Um, but you guys can go check him out. He's playing a lot of Waystone. He's playing some Steam games right now. Uh, on gate, I mean. Um, but you guys can go check him out. And that's after the stream. You know, or if we're just boring the hell out of you, you can go there now if you want to. Okay. Still love you. I, <laughs> I won't be mad. <laughs> I shall be furious, so don't leave. Um... <laughs> Uh, question mark guy, do you have anybody that you'd like to shout out this week? No, nope. nope. they're usually nope. pretty quiet. Yeah, he is. He's always really quiet for some reason. He doesn't talk enough. I think we need to replace him on the show. Sorry, <laughs> question mark guy, you're getting replaced. Well, well, actually, good news, Janelle is is supposed to be coming back after I Halloween. Know. I know. So. I was gonna say that too, but. You just said it. Awesome. Question mark. Question mark. Man will be replaced by question mark woman. Yes, I'm gonna. I'm actually <laughs> gonna get one for next week or next show. <laughs> but yes, you guys did hear that. Janelle number five. You guys, third co-host right here in Horse Play. She has some ish, uh, not issues. She has some family issues that she, family, whatever. She had to take care of first before she could continue gaming. So, but she's coming back right after Halloween. So, looking forward to her. First week in November show to uh, have a uh, OJ Wow back on the show. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. 
But don't forget, guys, in the meantime, you can keep the conversation going. No matter who's on the show and who's off the show, you know, you can always reach us through Twitter, at Obi-1X2, at YogiZilla, at Geeky Antics for the network. Uh-huh. And you know what? At Janelle underscore no five. And that's Janelle, J-A-N-E-L. Not the double L-E. So you can't miss her. She's a, she's a very lovely face to look at. And we can't, we can't wait to have her come back and, and, and have her just laugh at our corny jokes. It makes us feel better about ourselves. Well, that's what Mud does on the Sunday Dose. She just laughs at me. And then that just fills in, you know. Yeah. <laughs> they both got like, their own distinct uh, laughter, which is cool. <laughs> though, though Mud had some own, some of her own corny jokes to add, like the whole uh, Gamer Grills thing. That was great. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and also, don't forget, besides the Twitter, we have our website, of course, geekyantics.net. That's G-E-E-K-Y-A-N-T-I-C-S dot net. And then we have the voicemail hotline, 1206-415-497. Again, 1206-415-497. Four ninety seven. Oh, and of course, for the people that are shy, you could always uh, leave us an uh, email. That's still a thing. Mail at geekyantics.net. Well, what else we got? Don't write us a letter, okay? Do an email. <laughs> it's easier. Promise. <laughs> okay, guys, we do have some open cat. We are looking for more people that just uh, are interested in podcasting, writing, anything that they would love to do. We're looking for recurring current guests and backup hosts for all our shows. Well... I know I'm looking for mine. Uh, yes, the Sunday Dose, uh, Horseplay Live, Tam and My Tea Time. Oh, man, what's the other one? I'm, yeah, sorry. Chris, <laughs> Gaming Death Podcast. Yeah, that's it. But you guys can look at it if you guys are interested. For our full list of exclusive and syndicated shows, check out geekyantics.net forward slash podcast, and you can see any podcast, anything you'd like to be interested in. All you got to do is ask. There is no host on our network that wouldn't say, hey, no, nah, hell no, get the hell out of here. No, they'd be like, sure, what's up, come on the show, you know. And, of course, if they like you, then, hey, if they like you, they like you. Sweet. But, you know, you guys can check it out. You guys can leave us any kind of comments anywhere. Uh, leave us comments via iTunes um, so we can uh, be item lost in my place. iTunes, Facebook, et cetera, anywhere that, you know, Twitter, of course, <laughs> at Obi1X2, at YogiZilla. At question mark guy. Don't do the question mark guy I was just playing. Um, <laughs> I think there's actually a Twitter at question mark guy. So <laughs> don't, don't tweet him. I did the other day and he didn't like it very well. I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure that's going to be a thing already. It, it Oh, no, it is. I tried it. I was like, at question mark guy. And he'd come up and he's got like 100, 100K followers. <laughs> wow, okay. It's a real thing. This- there's so many uh, RP accounts on Twitter, too. Mm-hmm. People that have alternate accounts. I'm trying to get Blue to come over to me. She's teasing me right now. Come on, Blue. I just passed out, dude. I'm just like... But we're going to get right into our feature, guys. Now, there's an important question we want to ask anybody and everybody. Um, are conventions worth it anymore? Um, Yogi... I'm gonna, I want you to start with this because you just went to one. You just went to Walker Stalker in Carolina. Uh, what do you think? So, I mean, it ended uh, a few days ago, and uh, I kept up with some of the people that I met over there. I said a bunch of them, and we're still kind of on that con high. Um, I talked to a lot of the fans, um, and I feel like there's still a lot of burning questions, a lot of mixed feelings. Uh Overall, people feel they either completely love it or they absolutely hate it. There's like no in between. Um, I was hoping to have a couple of the of the people that volunteered for the event and some of the guests on the on the on the con, but they couldn't make it as a scheduling conflict. Even with uh, Friday, us pushing it up to Friday. But you know, that'll be in the future probably. I think we're gonna keep revisiting this. Um, and I still have so much stuff uh, related to that to the convention to write up process i put a video up on youtube by the way if you guys want the raw things go to uh, youtube.com forward slash geeky antics and you'll see what people feel about it right now i have a whole bunch of photos that i took there too a lot of them are crappy because i was kind of like being pushed around and it was like i was tired so i was like ah lazy shot ah. <laughs> i felt like a zombie the whole weekend 
Oh, I was running out of feeling. Still, I am. But, uh, you know, for me overall, it was a, a positive experience, but I'm still kind of struggling with the idea. Like, if I was a paying customer, and I was paying because I, I paid for some of the stuff there, but, you know, I, there's, no, there's no way I would have been able to afford it if, like, I had paid for the passes, the three-day pass, and all the other stuff people were doing. It's, 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 it's insane how much money you spend. So if I was, like, someone that was spending, you know, the two to five hundred just to go to the event and, and do lots of stuff there, not to mention, like, hotel accommodations and, you know, food and all that stuff, travel, you know, none of that stuff. Just just to attend the convention and get a decent amount of stuff done, photo ops, autographs and stuff. I wonder, like, if I was one of those people, if I would feel satisfied. And there were a lot of people that, that in the in the con, you know, Walk Star Con, that felt like it was a, a bit of a cash grab. Like, uh, especially the people that went to the previous Walker Stalker Con and then went to this year. This is only the second year that's been running. Mm -hmm. You know anybody that's, that's gone before? Obi? Um, I have a couple of buddies down the road, actually. I believe Chewy went to last year's, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but uh, when you were said something about was Walker Stalker Con a, a, a cash grab, it's not just Walker Stalker Con, though. I mean, I think we might be, I might be getting into this a little bit early, but I mean, any, any convention that you go to, uh, and I'm going to, BlizzCon, Comic-Con, uh, there, I'm, there's so many cons out there that you can't, everything costs, there's, it's not about the game, video games anymore, it's about how much money can we make at the door, and then if we can't make that much money at the door, how much money can we get people, you know, because they, of course, they have everything. From every game, characters and action figures, pillows and just anything and everything that you can possibly want to get uh, for the for the specific game. I'm sure I didn't I didn't really get any pictures yet from Yoga. I didn't really see any, but I'm sure there was zombie, you know, everything, you know, T-shirts, clothes, action figures, you know, blankets and you know, top, you know, whatever. I'm sure anything and everything you possibly wanted, it was probably there. But then you spend thirty dollars for a T-shirt. Forty dollars for a T-shirt. I don't even know how much was all this stuff, yo. Oh yeah, the, the, the merchandise. You know, the mer merchandise is obviously marked up big time because you know it's the convenience factor, the convenience factor rather. Um, Which in in reality it should be knocked down because you're at the con. You're at. Yeah. You're there. I mean. You know, <laughs> See, Andy makes a good point. Spaffy Zilla, he's saying that every single con is about ripping people off. They're not about the fan base, but about how much, you know, how much they can uh, milk people for cash. Wait, you know, the thing is, Walker Stalker Con, Walker Stalker Con started off as a true fan event, and they they really did, because uh, it was all access. Everybody had a good time. The stars, the celebrities were very friendly, and you know, everybody behaved themselves. But you know the, the the thing is inevitably as a con as a convention grows, you get the people that don't know how to behave, and then they have to get tightened up security, and they have to set up rules. So they set up all these kind of barriers, these boundaries to keep mm -hmm. the the idiots at control. Because otherwise, it'd be like a mad a mad mob rushing to the stage to get hugs from these celebrities, or you know pulling people every which way direction. So I, so I get that, but you know I feel like Walker Star Con is still one of the better conventions. If not eh. the, one of the best, you know, because if you look at like Dragon Con, the guy that, and, and I hear this from people that have gone to Dragon Con for many, many years and know the people that run that event, they get around 90,000 people or more on their conventions. Though they, you know, uh, they lie sometimes on their numbers to avoid uh, the, the, the tax man, I guess, and they say they get like 50, 60. Now, Walker Star Con this year just got thirty-five thousand. Uh, it's growing. I mean, originally when they did it about two years ago, it's, they only expected uh, one thousand people to show up because it's supposed to be like a small fan meetup, and then it became a huge thing right off the bat. So they're growing rapidly already. Thirty-five k second year is impressive. So there's growing pains. Well, and it's inevitable. But Dragon Con is the worst. One of the worst because they monetize everything. If it could be. If they could put a price tag on it, they're going to put a price tag on it. Oh, you want to breathe air over here? You got to pay for that. Oh, you want to you wanna be able to sit down? You got to pay for that. You want to use the bathroom? You got to pay for that. 
It's well, kind of like one and, of those and things. There's one that's like, and I said it a few minutes ago, there's one that is huge, but they don't nickel and dime you to death, uh, it, which is BlizzCon. Um, I went to BlizzCon a couple years ago, and I, I've been to several cons. I've been to Comic-Con. I've been to, um, I can't even remember them. That's how bad they are. Um, but when I went to BlizzCon a couple years ago, it was it was something that I actually enjoyed. Yes, I spent some money, but it wasn't an, it wasn't the kind of money that I thought I was gonna spend. Like, oh man, I'm a, I'm gonna just like something like Spathy just said it. You know, they fifty dollars a t-shirt, ten dollars for a bottle of water, and I'm not talking a bottle of water, a big one. I'm talking a bottle of water this size, okay? Like an eight ounce bottle of water, a sixteen ounce bottle of water. That's it for ten bucks. But uh, like I said, BlizzCon, I've been to it. I can't say it's the best one because I'm sure that I'll find out next year at Walker Stalker Con. But I mean, it's not so. It's not one of the ones that you know just nickel and dime you to death. Yeah, you know, I don't feel like I don't feel like it's inherently wrong to want to make profit. You know, but it's when they go to this extreme. These extremes of of like really increasing the profit margins and like doing all this silliness. Like they had twelve hundred dollar VIP badges. Uh, I met someone that got the at the time they got the highest VIP package you could get, and they paid six hundred dollars for it. And then they downgraded their badge and introduced a higher level tier for VIP. So he was a gold VIP, and that was the highest level at the time. Then they introduced the platinum VIP and took away all the stuff that he could do with the gold VIP. So his six hundred dollar thing got downgraded essentially to a three hundred dollar package, and then uh, he had to complain to get some of the stuff you could get from the twelve hundred dollar package. Um, you know, and then you, you know, you I guess you take the good with the bad, but I, I can see where that could leave a, a bad taste in people's mouths. And it's not just Walker Stalker kind of does that. Now them, they get a bit of a free pass just because it's their second year. And I want to. I still kind of want to believe that people do honestly start off these conventions as wanting it to be about the about the fans, but then they realize how much legal liability you have to deal with, and how much cost there is, and the time involved. They're taking time off from their jobs, whatever's going on. So they need to justify it to some extent. But the thing, the thing is a happy medium where it's not like. Pay charging sixty dollars for a T-shirt or something crazy—that's that's insane. Right. Well, that's what I was—that's what I'm saying, though. You don't need to. I know you want to make as much money as possible, and still have your fans and the people that play your video games, or that that watch your shows or that buy your merchandise can have a good time. Okay? Yeah. I'm really sorry to say this. They might be bigger bottles of water, but if somebody's going to go to a, a con, okay. You guys know, you buy a case of water for $2. $2. There's what, 24, 30 bottles of water in a case? And you're charging, you buy the case for $2 and you make 300 off it? You're stupid. I mean, <laughs> anybody that buys it's stupid. I mean, really, but you can make your money. And this is to all the cons, all the conventions everywhere. You can make your money, but not charge everybody a an arm and a leg just to have fun. I mean, you got to bring three hundred dollars just to eat and drink for one day. That's how much you're gonna spend. You spend ten dollars on a bottle of water, a hamburger, or whatever, a hot dog, or whatever. I know it's like six, seven, eight bucks at least. And yeah, if the you, water's ten dollars, and you know the hamburger's fifteen. You go to a con and you're broke or don't have that much long. money. You don't have that much money to spare. You're not gonna have a good time. Uh, I mean, I met a uh, a guy that got like twenty autographs, and you know, you're you're spending anywhere from forty to eighty dollars per autograph. Then ten dollars if you want a, uh, one of the photos that they have available to autograph. You don't have your own thing to autograph. Then on top of that, an average of about fifteen twenty dollars to get each uh, autograph certified. If you want to be able to like have it have value in the future. You know, all these, uh, it's crazy. So they, 20 of those, you're, you're talking about, you know, it could be possibly $2,000 right there. I mean, I mean, I'm exaggerating, but that's insane. You know, I think you should be able to, to go be able to go to these cons casually 
And then that those people should be matter just as much because then they get excited. I think a convention should focus more about building up the community and creating, you know, the 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 brand sentiment that might be lacking, or you know, or supporting it. You know, keeping people happy about it, whatever brand it is, whether it's a video game, a TV show, you know. Uh, movie, whatever it is, you know, you you want to keep people excited about the things that they love and 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 sharing that, you know, love with other people that like the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, Andy was saying that you you, that you should run a, a con as not for profit, uh, and you know the costs costs only are covered, and then the remainder go to charity. You know, Spathy, and I think that's Spathy, sorry, Zoe, Spathy, challenge accepted. You know what I'm doing in the future here. We're going to do it. We're going <laughs> to, I'm telling you guys right now, we're going to do it. I'm going to go rent out a fucking building and we're going to have a con. We're going to have some kind of geeky con. I don't give a damn what it is, but we're going to have it. See, I'm not even, I'm not even going to make that commitment because. And Yogi, I'm... Yogi is going to run it. See, this is what I say. <laughs> like, it'd be great L-I-L. to say, it'd be great to say, oh, only cover the costs, and then the rest go to charity. There's so much work. You I, I a, a majority should go to charity, but to say, you know, I don't think it needs to be not, not for profit. It's a right, profit is not a dirty thing. You know, if you want to just do, if all you want to do all year long is do podcasts, Twitch streams, and then run conventions, you know, three three or four conventions a, a, a year, you know, or maybe two or one or two big conventions a year, that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. And you met, you want to make a living off of that? Just don't get greedy about it. You know, it, it, it's it's like, oh, do I make $10 million or do I make $2 million? Mm, I don't know. If I can go for the $10 million, I go for it. You know, that's when it gets excessive. You know, so I, I think there needs to be like a certain level of humility. Like, well, let me try to give to the people. Like, there's so many people that volunteer at these things. Right. All right. Now, granted, they get all access passes. That's great, and it's something that all access isn't really all access. But you know, they get they get access to some degree. If, if you're a volunteer, if you're a volunteer, you your your all access is restricted to whatever under the top paid person gets. So, if, like you said, the twelve hundred dollars things. If you're a volunteer, you get an equivalent of the the one that you're like your buddy said the six hundred dollar one. You don't get shit. I volunteered at a con before. You just get you can just walk anywhere you want to, really. Yeah, no. I mean, I if think you get... I, go ahead. No, I think the problem is that there needs to be a distinction between an expo and a convention, and maybe there might be some gradients there. But to me, like an expo, like a E three, is more of a press event. It's not really for the fans, and it's it's more of a business event, you know. Uh, to me, a convention in the geeky sense is more about the fans, and it's it's more about having that sense of community. And there's other kind of things you could say, but you know, I, it's a connotation. But I feel like there's a certain spirit you you expect, like you know, it, some of the you know. I'll give you a good example. I, I spoke with Chris and Angela, and and, and uh, they're veterans of the convention circuit. Their business is completely built around conventions. They don't have a, a store that they, they set up, they pay for, they work out from their homes and from the convention centers, um, and they run their own convention. Uh, Conjure, I think it's called Conjure Fest, is coming up in, uh, in, a, in a few weeks, actually. Uh, but Chris, Chris and, a- and Angela, they strictly sell comic books and fan, fa- uh, memorabil- fan memorabilia and all kinds of little neat items, buttons, like really cool stuff, Doctor Who, Harry Potter. Um, I mean, a they got a bit of everything, but they said that, that that a lot of these conventions get so greedy that the vendors who pay for for a booth there get the short end of the stick because they're barely making any money to even cover their their, their booth costs. Because by the time the fans are, are done going to, paying for the VIP packages and the photo packages and the autographs. There's nothing left, and they're, they're 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 tapped out, and that sucks. You know, why can't it be a twenty dollar uh, autograph instead of a forty dollar autograph, or instead of an eighty dollar autograph, a forty dollar autograph? 
you know, and I man, mind you that a lot of times it's ma the managers and the agents that get involved in that stuff. But, you know, everybody needs to kind of work together and realize, hey, we need to spread the wealth around and, and make this affordable for everybody, make I'm, it worthwhile for everybody. Meet, meet me in the middle. I'm going to use somebody as a, uh, as a, uh, what's the word for it? Uh, just because we know him or Yogi knows him. Um, I went to, man, what con was it? And Will Wheaton was there. Okay. Yay! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying. Uh, everybody else was like, oh, yeah, you want a you wanna signed autograph and a picture? It's $45. Will? No. It was like 15 I mean, he didn't do shit. He basically did it just to shut, his, shut his, his manager or whatever, you know, whoever the guy that's running his thing, just to shut him up. It was literally like $10 for a signed autograph and $5 for a picture because he didn't care. He did it for the fans. I mean, if you, if, and I've actually talked to him. <laughs> Coolest guy I've ever met, uh, ever talked to. But he's just like us. He's, he's a geek. He's just like us, guys. <laughs> if you don't think he yeah, is, we, we should have him on horseplay sometime and we'll prove he is a geek. <laughs> a movie stars can be geeks too. Okay, I guarantee it. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, I like I like I'd like to be able to do uh something. Well, oh, let me let me correct myself. Yes, I know Will Whedon to the extent of we've talked on like Google Plus and Twitter and and it's not like and that. I, and right? I, yeah, like I don't call him up on my phone. I don't want people thinking like that's my homie. But you know, um. I, I know people that are common in them, common friend, friend circles. So there's a good chance we get him on the show. He's just very busy with tabletop and like geek and sundry stuff. Um, yeah, that show is legit tabletop. But you know, I'd love to do something like that. Like uh, the, um, Chris and Angela, they said they like the geeky conventions, uh, where it's more about you know the vendors and the fans and having fun activities and it's not about just these crazy autograph things because you know once you start doing like focusing on autographs and um all these like really fanboy things it takes up so much to the of the, like the floor space and then like the lines are insane people have spent sitting eight hours in a line to get an autograph they're missing all the panels all the meetups you know they don't get a chance to check out the vendors that's no fun. It's fun to be able to walk the floor, shake hands with people, start conversations, and not feel like rushed, like, oh, I got to get to the line because they're only here one day and I got to get the autograph. You know, that's no, that's no fun. So, you know, I would like to do, I, I would definitely, that would be one of my, my dreams for sure is set up a, a geeky convention where we could have people like Will Whedon, Felicia Day, you know, lesser known people too, and, and you know, uh, people, podcasters, you know, have fellow podcasters or YouTube personalities in there. Like, have it be a, like a, a little mix of, of different kind of personalities and have it, different kind of activities we could do. That'd be awesome. Like, set up a little tabletop gaming section, you know? I mean, there's so much we, you could do with that. <laughs> See what my phone book says on my phone? Yes. See, there's two of them right there? Yeah. I got his phone number. Oh! oh. Oh, we feel special. I told you I talked to him the other day. <laughs> I said, hit me up on my phone, man. I got to go. All right, man. Sounds good. Send me phone yeah. number. Text me. Hey, I'll take it. Yeah, Will we'll Win is the man. <laughs> oh, he, he's got to show off. I got to rub it in. I got to rub my, it in. <laughs> I'm trying to downplay my relationship, and he's got to like go one up. All right. <laughs> All right there, buddy. Hey. I'm proud of it, man. <laughs> I got a movie star's phone number in my, my phone. Another geek. Anyway, I have lots of geeks on my phone. Mm hmm. Ooh, I'm trying to look up. Uh, uh -huh. Got a bunch of business cards, and, and I want to I want to give some shout outs in a little bit. Some of the cool people we met. But anyway, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna, you know, um, my cat. Bruce trying to figure out what I'm doing here with this weird box. Well, while Yogi's not... looking, actually, you keep looking, buddy. Um, oh, no, I'm done. But go if ahead. you want to give some shout outs and some love. Now, every week, I ask a question to Yogi, and sometimes he tells me, and sometimes he goes, uh uh. Um, we try to see where we're at, of course, uh, on the rankings for allgames.com, the charts. Now, 
we try to get above you know top 15 just because that's our goal now of course our goal that we'd like to hit every week is you know our the one we want to make sure we hit is the top 10 so yogi where are we at on the top 15 allgames.com charts number 12 and number 12 thank you guys very much for getting us to number 12 now this is the this is uh, something to you guys and i can't remember the word for the life of me this is a challenge to all you viewers listeners anybody that's live and or listening to us on the podcast we want to get to number 10 so please this is this is just it's a modest goal guys two spots we need to get to number 10 or below Next week, Thursday, for Horseplay. Okay, so you guys, every every week, um, now it's, remember, we're live-ish around Thursday, 5 p.m.-ish, ish, eh, Eastern time, sometimes a little bit later, sometimes a little bit, uh, a little bit earlier. But even if you can't stay and listen, please leave us up, uh, uh, stream up on dollgames.com. It would be very, very helpful. And uh, many, many thanks again to all of you that, that show us the love. To even if you don't listen to it all, you leave it up and, and help us with views and numbers and all that. That's awesome. So, thank you very much, Yogi. Shout uh-huh. out. Uh-huh. 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 <laughs> yes, I'd like to give some wholehearted shout outs to our friends, both new and old, old and new. So we want to say it, uh, including people from uh, WSC, Washington, Atlanta. Uh, we got Chris Angela, who I mentioned earlier. Starbase 1552, uh, Judd, really cool dude. If you go over to Starbase uh, 1552, I think they're based in Tennessee. They got all kinds of really cool swag, Dr. Who stuff. Judd, Judd Basil, that's who you want to check out. Yeah, Mount Pleasant, Tennessee, if anyone's in that area, make sure you give them a shout out. They got a lot of cool collectibles, Dr. Who stuff, Walking Dead stuff, comic books. Anime, I mean, I, I, I had to, like, walk out of his section quickly because he's they were so nice. And then it's like, I want to spend money. No, got to go, got to go. But, yeah, Starbase 1552. And I think they have an eBay store, too. Uh, Unlikely Heroes. Uh, I mean, you see all over Twitch, you see the chibis that everybody does of themselves, the little cartoon version of themselves. Mm-hmm. These, oh, you uh, mean, like, my yellow face? That, that's not a chibi. That's a that I Simpsonized you. It's a little different. I Chibi's a more anime style. I have a beard but, though. I don't even. Ha- Come on, man. Listen, that, that's, you're, you're, you're missing the point. But unlikely heroes, they do the anime stuff really well. They do commission work, and of course, you know, if you want to be like every other Twitch streamer, do the chibis. And uh, I mean, they, I saw one of them. Um, I forget her name, but uh, she was doing. Neo and she calls she goes by the avatar Neo Anime Girl, but she does. I saw her doing this the work live, a commission work live, and it's just so cool watching her pencil it in, then ink it, then color it in. I mean, it was amazing. So unlikely heroes, make sure you check them out. They're on uh, they're on Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff. You know, we're probably gonna have a lot of people on our on on our shows. So stay t- stay tuned for that. Uh, John and Leanne uh, of Pittsburgh, they uh, did an interview. Uh, one of the few that you'll catch on the YouTube channel that I video I just I just put up today. I'm I've been busy. Uh, Cindy and Matt of Chai Town, awesome people. They volunteered Walk Star Con, uh, and we hung out like late uh, Sunday night to Monday morning to like five in the morning. It was crazy. Uh, I I don't even know how I'm still awake. I'm still recovering. Uh, April of Charlotte, really cool chick. Uh, and she and she was one of the people that was disgruntled about how the event was handled. Uh, Travis Love, who plays uh, Shumpert, I believe his name is, Bo- Bowman from The Walking Dead. We we bumped into him in uh, uh, one of the bars we were at over there. Really cool dude. He's just down to earth as heck. Scott Wilson, a.k.a. Herschel, smoking his cigars. He smoked some good cigars. It was fun just sitting, standing next to him and smoke and inhaling, getting a second hand kind of thing. Uh, Parker, aka Noah, aka Asthma Boy from uh, The Walking Dead. Uh, cool, really cool guy. His mom is really cool too. Um, and then Howard Sherman, who was one of my favorite people to to really connect with during the con. Uh, this is one of the oldest people to play a zombie. One of the originals. One of the greats. 
Uh, George Romero says he's what he's the best person, the best actor that that portrays zombies in the industry. Uh, he played Bub the, the zombie on Day of the Dead, and uh, just really stand up kind of guy, really humble, friendly. Um, so we have a lot of cool potential guests lined up in the future here for the Geeky Ants Network. Uh, whether it be on Tea Time, Horseplay Live, one of our other shows, we'll see. And there's still so much more. Uh, Craig Angler from uh, Zombie Nation. Uh, we got uh, John, uh, I believe his name is Jonathan, who wrote 900 Miles of Zombies. Uh, um, we had Jason Brandt recently, and we'll probably get him back on uh, on, the, on one of our shows. Uh, a lot of the zombie love, a lot of geeky love. I mean, it's exciting to see people in so many different spaces of entertainment. So tell us a shout out, guys. Lots of love here. Wait, what's going on over here in the in the chat? No, Are you guys uh, trying to derail? <laughs> you're trying. You're trying to derail. I would never ever do that to you, sir. But yeah, real quick, while Obi tries to derail me, shout outs to people in the chat on this <laughs> unusual time for us. We got BFT nine thousand, Racing John. And people that are not registering, they're either watching us while they're not logged in or Twitch is being interesting again. Oh, and Mubot. Mubot never misses a beat. Hey, that was my line. It says Obi, colon, shout outs to everyone in the chat. Well, you were distracted. No, I wasn't. I was waiting for you to get done talking. Nope. Took too long. Did you go open us up in the next one? God. <laughs> you are, you're trolling me. Yogi is trolling everybody, so... Hashtag uh, hype tro yogi troll. Get the yogi troll hype rolling, guys. <laughs> it needs Twitch streamers out there, guys. Gang, now that uh, we do Twitch, the Twitch hosting, um, we we love to. If you guys, if you are a streamer, if you know a streamer that you just love to watch, let us know. Um, let us know if they have, you know, if they have some kind of a schedule or something to where we can get on there and 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 host uh, that streamer via. Um, geeky antics on Twitch here. So we are encouraging all fellow streamers to host our friends and of course the network, our network, as well as you know, we host you, you host us, blah blah blah. Happy big happy family. But this keeps your channel active and it helps and it kinda helps everybody out. So if somebody does come to your channel and you're a known streamer and you you know, they come up and they say, Oh hey, wait, what's this show? And then they're watching Horseplay Live. Hey, that helps. Thank you very much for anybody and everybody that does do that. Holy crap. I got the hiccups. <laughs> now it's not... be trolling. They're hating. Sorry. We should make that a video. <laughs> wow, I'm giving you some inspiration for viral videos. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got one for you. I make one. All right, we're going to make it when Yogi goes to bed, which he never does. He's a freaking vampire. He stays up all night. Um, but when he goes to bed, we're going to make a troll video, everybody. So everybody be back at this time. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be about Yogi. I'm going to need By some. By the way, I'm not, I'm not doing Retro <laughs> Friday tonight, I don't think. Going to need yeah, some need... artists. <laughs> oh, boy. I have to end one. Yes, you do. Dude, you, you, I don't know if you're like <clears throat> indigestion or gas is transferring over to me, but now I just mm. got it. Like, what the heck? Some bad juju in the air. Feature number two, guys. Now, we do have, um, you know, we're going fairly quickly through this, so we do apologize if we're going too fast. Um, like I said, we're, Yogi is, uh, yeah, I don't think he's had any sleep in about a week, and I'm just, I'm always tired, so it's whatever. Feature number two, talking the walking dead season five is shaping up to be the best season yet i don't think so that's mm. because i haven't watched i'm not fully up to date so if you guys are watching the walking dead i do apologize but we are going to talk about it so there's your <laughs> dog so we are going to lay down uh we are going to talk about uh the walking dead so if you guys have not been caught up we are getting ready to spoil it. So, well, real quick, who 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 in the chat is caught up, and who isn't? Quick show, so we know how deep we got to go in it. Now, Obi, I gave you a heads up. This is what we're gonna talk about. I already told you. I'm not. Again. I'm not gonna remember it tomorrow anyway. I okay. have to re-listen to the show to remember what you said. All right. Well, maybe. 
well, I'm gonna watch it with my wife and go, hey, hey, you want to guess what happens next? You want to get? <laughs> I'm gonna play that game with her again. <laughs> Cause she's, wa- won't. she's watching it. T- no, we're gonna talk about it. <laughs> Come on, you're well, gonna help me out. We could talk about too. I mean, Agents of Shield, Z Nation, Arrow, American Horror Story. I know you're one of your favorites, Sleepy Hollow. They're like good television out right now. I'm and, caught and up with course, the originals now. Oh, the originals. I am caught up with the originals. Uh, he, BFT says the same thing. I'm not caught up. All right, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into it a little bit. I won't go too deep in it. It's more fun when you can have a conversation about it. Well, but anyway. I, we can conversate about it because I've watched bits and, it's bits and pieces. Like, I'll stay, like, I'll be in the room while it's, like, playing, and I'll watch, like, three quarters of it and then go away because I have to do something. Yeah, we're fine, man. Just go do your thing. I'll watch them tonight, right, so I'll, I'll make sure that I know everything that we talked about tonight. How's that? So remember, remember... We were speculating that Carol was going to become like a superhero, like Some commando sort. type thing. Mm-hmm. But that's exactly what happened in episode one of the season premiere. We talked a little, a little bit about this in our last episode, but she's turned into she fucking just, she woman and shit. <laughs> she, yeah, she, she just saved everybody's, you know, bacon. And it's kind of like, you know, I, I've accepted right now on the show that they were going back to comic, they're, they're becoming more of a comic book than a TV show. It was, they were a little more about realism in the beginning, but now it's like, we're going to be more closer to the comics. That's what season five is telling me. It's like, mm. we're going to follow the comics a little more closely. And that's fine. But you got to just remember, like, a lot of these things that they do, uh, It's just think about it in the sense of a comic book. Well, I mean, some of the speculations that were, gonna, that were happening before season five started were actually that they were going to make it more of, like, the, the comic book and bring back some of the not-so realistic elements to the you know to the show opposed to keeping it all about just the humans and then zombies are on the outside i mean they're they're giving it more of a uh, i guess they're trying to keep it bounced up trying to keep it hype because i mean you really if they do it again if they did season five like they did one through three or one through four the show not half as half the people that are watching the beginning aren't going to watch it at the end but season yeah. four destroyed the whole I mean, season four. I'm sorry to say this to the to the developer, the makers of of this show, but you destroyed it. Now coming back with season five, from what I watch, and I will get caught up all the way. They're they're like, oh shit, you know, we need to change something, or we're gonna lose this viewer. So they did see it. So I'm really like the Yogi said. I'm kind of excited of what's gonna happen uh, more and more as the season five uh, goes on. So. Yes. We we finally That's have. All you got? Yeah, dude. I'm I'm tired I'm just like you, bro. More. I, oh, well, I can keep going if you want to. Well, you know the the. I I don't think season four was that bad. I just feel like they just they did so it. much. I mean, they just well, they did so much to build up to term to terminus, right? Right. And terminus so far has been like a very tiny part of this season. Like, I don't think, I feel like the only purpose Terminus served was to give him a really tough situation to get out of. Spoilers! You know? <laughs> and they get out of it. And and then, and, and then it's, it's an excuse for them to become more united as a group. And then the, for, it's an excuse for them to introduce uh, new characters, uh, new, new villains. So they've done that. But it's like Terminus, all this effort to get to Terminus, and it's like, oh, bye-bye. Yeah, I mean Woodbury lasted longer than that, mm-hmm. um, so it's kind of it's kind of a shame. Like again, Terminus didn't exist in the comics, from what I recall. I, I'm I'm starting to get back into them now because I'm just so curious. The season has been so epic. Uh, usually, you know, you expect a a really strong series premiere, but episode two was amazing. I mean, I was like, wow. Some people said it dragged down. I'm like, how? It was like it, it was just such a. It had everything you needed to have. It built it to a climax. It had an oh shit moment. Um, I mean, I don't know what else people could watch. It's just from it. like sex, though. You build it to a climax, and if you don't get out the way soon enough, you have an oh shit moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! What? You don't want to know. Go take a shower now. <laughs> Kids, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> don't, don't listen to him. Just because he has a beard doesn't mean he knows what he's talking about. I'm wise. <laughs> oh gosh. 
I, I still bump into kids and say, oh, yeah, if you pull out, it's, it'll be fine. Uh, no, that's not how it works. Go back to school. <laughs> There's things that happened before. We're not talking about this, Yogi Zilla. I know. <laughs> Hey, you took it. So I'm just, I just want to make sure that well, as a public service announcement, people need to understand this stuff. Learn, learn your kids proper, like the yuck. Learn your kids proper, fools. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that just like Yogi said, I actually, um, since the the speculations of uh, before the season started, with it's going to go back towards move towards the comic a little bit more, and actually, um, I actually started reading them too. Uh, Comicbooks.com. You can find any comic book for free um, and read it. Um, <laughs> there's a shameless plug for you. A little early, but we're good. <laughs> they, like, they got like 140 issues, too. I think they're up to the sixth or seventh volume. It's a lot of stuff to catch up with. And then on top of that, um, Jay, I think I always butcher his last name. So I'm not going to try, but Jay Shenanoga, Benanoga, Benanoga is yeah. his name. Uh, he, he wrote team. he has the novels where he talks about um about the um the governor and like the rise the fall like the whole transformation that's a whole thing that they kind of breeze through to an extent because if you think about it there was a lot more to the governor's story than we really understood they kind of hinted at it but we only saw the tip of the iceberg like there was a, a split personality issue going on there uh but there's a the reason why there's that split personality we don't really get it. I think they're going to... There's already a lot of callbacks in Season 5. So I think they're going to start... All these things that we felt that like were pointless dialogue, you know, silly thing, scenes that they added that they never did anything with, all these things they dangled throughout the past, you know, two or three seasons, I think we're finally going to get some... Uh, they're going to wrap it all up. Um, and I'm excited about it. So, yeah, you know, I hate, I hate to admit it, but the cannibal thing, I, I was wrong about it. It is cannibals. Uh, and it was, and I was, I didn't want to not, I didn't believe it wasn't cannibal. All right. I, I did not believe the cannibal thing, not because of what AMC was saying and, uh, you know, in interviews or whatever, or anybody related with the show was saying, but just, I felt like they could have done something different. Now I get it. They, 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 they mi misdirected us a little bit and then they took us back there anyway. So it's kind of like a double psych. But, you know, it's just anyone that talks to anyone that reads the comics, or if you read the comics himself, you know that they had the whole Hunters thing and the cannibals. So that's exactly what they're doing right now. Uh, and it's cool, but it just feels like, it feels a little cheap for me. I don't know, maybe I'm a, maybe I'm a sore loser. But, uh, you know, the way they're doing it, though, is very well done. So, and, you know, and it, there's... That second episode, man. You get, you get, why have, why didn't you see it before we did the show? You had an Sorry. extra day to watch it. I mean. Gosh. I, just talk about I, it. It's okay. I yeah, saw some of it, dude. I already told you that. And that's the same if I can't get the reaction from you. Like when Bob. Did you see what happened to Bob? No, I didn't. Ah, son of a monkey's uncle. All right. How about, the, how about Morgan? Remember Morgan? Yeah. Crazy dude. Apparently, mm -hmm. now he's not, he's not that crazy now, and mm -hmm. now he's on his mm -hmm. on foot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you think it is? What's up with that? With the X's that he's that he's uh, tracking down, or is he leaving them behind on the trees? I think it. I think it's. Oh, I don't remember that either. <laughs> I need to go watch it, dude. <laughs> Killing me. <laughs> There's a lot of a lot of speculations. Uh, a lot of speculation about what's going on with that. Oh. Uh, He's in where, where as he's walking, he's leaving X's on trees and shit. All right, yeah. other, 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 not just trees. Didn't he leave, put one on the? I want to say he put it on something like a side of like a, uh, like a, like a mountain or a rock or something like that too. But like I, I think, said, so. yeah, I, I, I think it's just him, you know, because uh, maybe leaving a mark for somebody to follow. Wow. Or where he's been, or he's leading somebody that's dangerous to them, you know, whatever. Yeah, could be I anything, think it could really. be gritty, but I have a feeling it's, uh, you know, Gareth's group from Terminus, I, they got split up. Mm -hmm. I think he's leaving them behind so that everybody can get back together, reunite. And that's how he's, he recreated his group and uh, Hunters have officially come to be, as we know them. 
And I think that's why I think Morgan is going to follow that. There's a little bit of time lapse going on there, too. So not everything's happening happening in order and it's not chronological. So that's another thing to throw you off. But I think Morgan's going to catch up with the group and end up saving them. All right. So, you know, there's a lot of this, like, one one person commando type stuff going on so far. <laughs> all right, Yogi, I'll tell you this. I'm already caught up with all my other shows. Okay. I will start tonight after this show is done, after Horseplay is done, while we're uploading. I'm uploading this stuff to wherever. I will start watching all of them. So next week, next week, you guys are hearing me live right now. Next week on Horseplay, we'll talk about the one through four. Okay? Deal? No, only two, no. They're only two episodes in. No, got, one, by two, the time three. we do the next Sorry. episode. Maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. third, third episode is tomorrow, right? Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. You jump in. Oh, yeah, tomorrow, technically, yeah. Well, till Sunday, but it, yeah, Sunday anyway. Yes, yeah. I, will, I have them recording on my TV. All I got to do is go watch them. So, I mean. Well, the Bernie question I'm going to ask is, you know, the group. Dr. Bricks... Who, though. That sucks. I'm pissed off about that, dude. Go ahead. I catch you by Dr. Who. Because it's on a channel that my cable provider doesn't allow us unless I pay extra money. It's like on channel one, 108 in my channel. My channel stop at 97. I told you what to do about that already. What? I'm not going to Hulu Plus, man. Screw that. Oh, my goodness. You're killing me. No, I won't do it. Nope. No, I'm going to put it in the chat again. So you have a short attention span. I there. do. It's okay. But anyway, yeah. the burning question for this season is Rick's group has gotten very large. Oh, face. Everybody's like, oh, they got to start trimming the herd. Because when there's too many people, you know, bad things happen. Right, it's hard to manage a large group. We start out with the prison, with the farm. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like it's gonna it's gonna work out. They're trying to drill that into us. So, who is safe this season, and who's likely to die? And uh... <laughs> um, I think it does. I think crazy like barbarian chicks. The chat, maybe. The... What? No, the chat's funny right now. Sounds like a porn site. It is a porn That's site, guys. I'm on it right now. <laughs> Hulu Plus will let you pay for commercials. <laughs> that's that's a good porn video. Parenthood. Oh God. Last man standing. <laughs> is that like a bunch of dudes in a room and last one to stick? Never mind. Um. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, who who is safe? Everybody think about that. Who is safe and who is likely to die? Or who would you like to see get, see killed off? Some people were saying Glenn and Maggie. I don't want to see him go. I like I like them a lot. No, I don't want Maggie to die. Yeah, no, Maggie can't die. But I don't want Glenn to die either, even though he stole my woman. That's okay. Uh, Glenn. Yeah, Glenn can shove off. No, see, if Glenn dies, Maggie's going to, like, either she's going to become very tough and, like, cold, or she's just going to get derpy and just, like, I don't know, they might pull a... I, that's I what she needs. She needs to be, like, she needs to be one of those, uh, you know... Uh, she needs to get that cold moment because she need she just needs to. That's just how it is. I don't even know what I'm saying, but it's okay. Well, they could also play the romantic thing where she falls Maggie. In love with no, Maggie and Glenn die together. It's like I'll never let go. <laughs> well, then you're killing off two of the main characters again. Oh, well, then you're just dwelling everything down to where this is going to be the last season. Well, in the trailer for episode three, they said that they lost three people, but the wording they use left it very open. I think what happened is Bob is already missing, but we know why he's missing. And Carol and Daryl are missing because they went on a mission because finally, finally, Beth is mentioned again. Like, I swear for like, it felt like six or seven episodes, Beth was not mentioned at all. Obi's having a, a nerdgasm over there. Dude, I am, bro. I love, dude. I've never known about this, man. I'm like on Hulu Plus, going, "This sucks. This sucks." And they're all right here. Yes. And my wife paid for Hulu Plus too, and you still got commercials. That's the, the hook. Yeah, that, that's messed up. Isn't that some, Hulu Plus? We'll let yeah, you pay for commercials. Yeah, Hulu Plus. This is that's funny, guys. Said. This is funny right here. Okay, we got, we went and got, you know, the the apps and everything for Hulu Plus because we wanted to watch shows that were happening right now. Well, then, 
And I was sitting there, I was like, why don't we just pay it, pay for it? Well, with any anything like this, you would have, if, if they don't take away all the commercials, they'd only give you like one or two, you know, per episode. So you don't have to watch just commercials, right? Because you're paying for it. That's what their ad, that's what the commercials are for is to pay for, right? It gives them money to, as their revenue. Well, if somebody's paying $10 a month, there, get the, get the commercials out of the way. But all they do is just take out one or two commercials because that's about, you know, 10 bucks. That's stupid, man. Anyway, thank you, Yogi. <laughs> it's back on topic. Uh, that was BFT that brought up the point. Uh, thank you, BFT. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's kind of like when you watch certain cable channels, like the non-premium ones, like the basic cable channels. They'll tell you, this, uh, this program brought to you with limited commercial interruption by blah. So it's kind of like what it is, like, instead of having a sponsor, you know, take away that burden, then they have you pay for a subscription to lighten the load. But the commercial, I'm like, eh, I can't do that. But anyway, moving along, cause I, I will, I, you know, I, I will talk for those that are caught up with the Walking Dead. I plan to talk about it in Timey Wimey Tea Time, episode 10. <laughs> the big the big one no tomorrow, Saturday at 12 p.m. noon. And Ali Kennedy should be joining us. I, you know what? I know he's into Star Wars and Arrow. I don't remember if he's that big into The Walking Dead. But I know he's really big into Doctor Who, so that's good. But we're going we're gonna to do a little bit of the, the Walking Dead talk, too. But, uh, I mean, there's... It, Dude, I'm telling you, once you watch these two episodes, we'll be able to really talk about it. I know, it's just... and it's I'll watch them tonight. But still, I like I said, I, if it's anything like season four, I'm not gonna continue watching it. Sorry, it's just not gonna happen. No, I hope it's better. This has been a lot more action packed and eventful. I mean, yeah, but season four started action packed and eventful in the first three or four episodes, and then five, six, seven, whatever was it like. 11 oh yeah that's true because 13 and then it just washed out like hey guys sorry we really have nothing to put in our our episodes so we're just gonna let them walk around and put marks on trees for a fucking hour yeah Come that's on, true man. That season four started off with the whole governor thing like a big boom and just everything was like oh this season's gonna be awesome <laughs> three episodes in you're like oh this season sucks we'll watch it when it comes out on netflix Oh uh, no, because uh, they have a lot of characters right now that could present potential issues. So they're they're kind of all over the places. Right. I don't see them resolving all of this in the next three or four episodes. Well, so we'll, we'll 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 address the whole the whole thing one through three. I will, like I said, I'll watch them as soon as three comes up. Actually, I'll watch three tomorrow. Um, so then we can actually talk about it correctly. Um, now, some of the other shows that we watch, of course, uh, you guys know Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, I don't watch, I think Yogi watches Z Nation, uh, Arrow, American Horror Story, Sleepy Hollow. Um, now, American Horror Story is the first one I want to talk about for you, Yogi. Because oh, okay. my wife started watching this show. And the only thing that I thought about because of the name, American Horror Story, it's going to be a show about scary shit. It's not. It's it's a show about some funny ass dumb people. <laughs> Sorry, but like the first couple of episodes that I watched, it wasn't scary. It was funny. Like they were. Yeah. Well, did you start from season one or you're yeah, starting this? I started season? from season one. Um, I'm catching that, up that, on all the each, shows at once, but each season is pretty much unrelated, so you could watch it. That's what I like about American Horror Story. Like, I feel like it's something I could watch whenever I'm in a morbid uh, sense. Demonic like morbid... state. Mm-hmm. Demonic state, you know, or, I had or maybe I want this, this, the campy horror. Like, it has a little bit of everything. It has some gory stuff. It has some, like, suspense. It has, like, the tension. Uh, it, has, it has a lot of the stuff about classic and even contemporary American horror. So, right. I mean, the show, the show is, is right on point. So, but it, you can jump in, it, in and out, and it's fine. Right, but it's the classic, the classic horror that I like. You know, like, you, okay, and think of, if you think about it this way, the horror now... Compared to the horror in the, and I don't want to go back that far, but the seventies and eighties, what was it? It's totally different. Uh, for oh, the yeah. fact of the, you know, just the graphics alone and the the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, the things that they can do with with paint, like face off, you know, that 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 special show effects. that they have. Uh, the, yeah, the special effects that they can do. 
Um, but it's Ooh, it's I guess not, the pictures of the, the guys from Face Off. The reason on, uh... the reason I like it is because it's not that now horror like it, it's 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 old school, but set in now. I don't I don't know how to explain it. And I'll I'll try to think of words later. But it's it's like old school horror that's actually 2014. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. But, but remember, each season is like a different period, a different setting. But yeah, but it's, so it's like, but as a whole show as a whole, I mean, I've watched, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it's not just season one was set in back in the old season two was set, you know, a little bit further up, you know, but it's, it's, it's this whole concept of their definition of horror is, is basic. It's, it's not all worked up. Like, you know, it, it's like, you know how, if you watch a uh, Friday the 13th, or 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 Carrie, you know, with the Friday the Thirteenth, this dude running around in your dreams with fucking blades for hands with a burnt face with a hat on, and a striped sweater that looks terrible on him, makes him look fat. But still, that's what you know Friday the Thirteenth is. Carrie, what is she? She's a bitch. She got picked on in school. Well, her shit came out and she turned into fire bitch. Yeah, you know what that is. You know, old school horror that. Has been around for years. That's what. That's what. I think is. you just combined Carrie and Firestarter. Well, Carrie, well, Carrie and Firestarter were uh, almost the same. Yeah, they, they were, were similar. You, they were because pissed them off. And... Yep, yep. Because Carrie got what Carrie Carrie got dumped blood on her at her prom. Okay, Firestarter. It wasn't the prom. It was she got blood dumped on her at a some kind of show or some kind of pageant or something. All right, it's the same thing. Well, then they both flipped out. Well, guess what? They both can start fires. Boom, you're dead, bitch. That's the same thing but in different names. <laughs> BFT get, gets it. He's like, 70s and 80s, golden age of slasher films. Amen, yeah. sir. I love you to death. Um, oh, yeah. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Now, I do want to touch a little bit about this. I know I'm going to let Yogi talk here a second about uh, Z Nation because I know he's he likes that show a lot. I haven't watched. Are you it. actually caught up on Agents of Shield? I am. I am. I am. Okay, I so am. we can talk about this. I, I won't even talk about, about Z Nation. So go ahead. Go what? ahead. Where am I going? What, at do, what do you think about oh, Agents, Agents of Shield, of Shield. This season? <laughs> um, I expected it to go a different way. Uh, tell you the truth, from the first couple episodes with, with, with you know how uh, like May was acting last season. Where she was really, really shady, and she was really in the gray area ninety nine percent of the time, and you you're like, "Why is she this such?" And then now this season, you're like, "Okay, this is why May's been acting really crazy." It's not the point that she's she's the 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 spy. You thought se. she was going to be bad. Well, I I actually did. I thought she was going to turn to not join a uh, Hydra, but turn into a. Just a vindictive evil bitch. Well, that's what she is, but she's doing it nicely, is what I'm saying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She kicks the balls in, but then she she caresses them afterwards. Exactly, dude. I mean, she kicks them up to your throat, and then makes sure she she puts them down. You know, brings them back. Um, uh, I I really think that Ward Ward, because you know Ward's locked up in in um the bus in that little yeah. cell. I really think he's gonna play a part in this season. Like, they're going to, I don't know. I think Ward's going to have, a, you know, that sorry moment because, of course, uh, what's the scientist? I can't remember the kid's name for shit. Um, Simmons? Uh, no, not Simmons. Not, Fitz, Simmons, Fitz. Simmons. Fitz. Yeah, Simmons, Simmons is in Hydra right now. Uh, it's not looking good for her either. Oh, so you're not completely caught up then. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I am. She's back now. But I'm, uh, oh. it's, it's, I'm talking... Come on, man. Do I? Th oh, I, let's just. We're gonna talk about just the updated episode. Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just. You but know. like, like when she went to Hydro, nobody knew where she was. Fitz was like, "Where'd she go? I need her." And he's seeing yeah. her the whole time. And you know, uh, with everything that Fitz is going through right now, I mean, what do you think about him? I feel I mean, terrible. Is, is for he him. is he gonna come back around? Is something going to happen to where he's going to get another, maybe another shock, and he's going to be like, oh, fuck, I'm brilliant again? He's got to, because I, I feel too bad for I don't, him. I, mean, I, I don't see him continuing in the show if he doesn't, because it's like dead weight. Really? No, no, don't say that. You can't get rid of Fitz. He's still brilliant, even with the mental condition. 
I mean, he'll either learn to work around it or the, or he'll recover more brain function. Something's going to happen. He's going to find some way to persevere because superhero awesome. fits. Yeah, they're, everybody's they're bringing out the, superheroes in their shows. They're going to put the GH225, uh, whatever it is, in them too. That'd be corny. He's like, he's no, go stop to it, stop it. But I feel, I feel so bad for him because, like, just when he's finally getting getting close to like letting Simmons know how he feels about her, she gets ganked away. He's like, "What the fuck, dude?" Yeah, he's got a, like such a shit end of everything. Now Ward, I don't know if they could bring uh if they if there's any redeeming of Grant Ward because he doesn't regret what he did. Um, yeah, he likes. He seems to genuinely care for Sky, but like he's still kind of a dick. So, but that's the part. I mean, that's just the part that he's been playing throughout the whole thing, even though he's been a double agent. Yeah, it's just like I don't know. I don't know if he if there's any way like he could be a, a good guy again or or play a unless yeah. I really I think I really think that something to do with Fritz and no, it's not Fritz. It's Fitz. Um, yeah, something to do with Fitz that, cause you know, like Fitz is the one, he's the one that blames Ward the most because that's Ward did it to him, you know, shocked him and, and, and hurt him physically. Well, I think if, if Fitz can get over that and, and basically somehow forgive or something to that point where, because what is he there for? Really? Yeah. No, where do you like, see why Ward? Why is, long? why is Ward still alive? Really? For Intel? <laughs> Good luck. That's not. He's not gonna. She's not gonna say anything that they don't already know. Or he well, knows the inner workings of, of Hydra. What? That's it. That's it. He's helped them out a, a, a few times already. Well, it's debatable if it's helped. Yeah, but, like... but the, that few times is that keeping that those few times that he's actually helping him out with, you know, some some iffy iffy intel that happens to work out. How do you really keep a character in the show just for that? I mean, he's got to have some big ending coming or some big moment coming to where he's either he's either going to escape and help Hydra, or he's going to turn face and help Chill. Well, I think his loyalties were to Garrett. I don't think his loyalties were to Hydra. I don't think he cares much about their mission. I think they made that clear. Actually, that was so, said in the last episode. Yeah. So maybe or it's going to get to a point maybe where Hydra might threaten Sky, and he's going to have to make a choice. And because and Sky be is his choice. secret, um, because he's doesn't he love her? I mean, he's like, truly... you see, I think he does genuinely care about her. So Sky's gonna get threatened, and then Ward's like, "Oh hell no," and run up and run up in that ass and whoops him. Yeah, someone in the crew's gonna act without like Colson's authorization, and they're gonna free Grant. Because they're gonna need his help. It's gonna be like serious. Like we we need all the people we can get right now. Colson's gonna be pissed off at the end because you let him out. He could have harmed a you know detrimental harm to whatever. But then he's gonna he's gonna show himself that he's an asset. And Colson, oh, oh let's try this and we'll get back in your cage. Or I don't know. Something's gonna happen. Something needs to happen though. Because every episode where you see him, he's just somebody comes down the stairs and then makes the ball. Makes the wall invisible. Oh, hi, Grant. How you doing again? Well, we'll see you next episode. Really? I'm so mad at him because he took up the the pretty attractive redhead. The one that was like a bit of a ball buster from S.H.I.E.L.D. What was her name? Han- I think her name was like, her last name was like Handler or something like that. Is it Jessica? Or Handle. I don't remember what her name was, but she was just saying, like the ball buster. Like everybody thought she was gonna be the turncoat, and then she ended up being really loyal. And like she, he, he caught her off guard. She was like, "Wait, what are you doing?" Pow pow. <laughs> I was like, "Damn!" Like really, like don't let your guard down at any time. He took out that whole freaking room full of people. Yeah. Well, and I do want to say though, I am not caught up because of the that funeral thing that we had to or that. Funeral. A wedding thing we had to go to. My sister got married, and I called it my funeral or her funeral. Oh, or the or his funeral. So... <laughs> what? 
I'm not caught up with all my shows because usually on Saturdays, Fridays, it's Friday nights and Saturdays. Oh. I spend with my wife, so we watch all our shows. So, like, we were gone for, like, a whole weekend, so we were, like, a week and a half behind, so all our shows are still, like, our DVRs are, like, all at 100%. <laughs> <laughs> trying to watch, because they're trying to watch all the shit, you know, trying to get caught up. Anyway. Yeah. I'm really enjoying this Agents of Shield uh, season. Um, I have it too. I would say I would say more than Arrow because, like Arrow's been this has been a good season season three, but I haven't even like, I've only seen the first episode. To tell you the truth, I have not not impressed. Sorry. Well, <laughs> okay, so you saw they they who they killed off. That yeah, was like but, stupid as hell. But it's just like, why would you do that? I don't. Are we gonna spoil this? Or is anybody I mean, caught up with the arrow? This has been this has been a spoiler cast, so I think everybody already knows. Spoilers yeah, about who do they kill an arrow? First episode, Sarah, and and the way she dies is so derpy. Like it must have been someone she knew that betrayed her. Like, well, I still, think it, I again, think it was her girlfriend uh, that betrayed her because she left her the first time. Yeah, that's I what think, I was thinking like, too. Because she wanted to go help. Um, cause remember at the end of last season where Sarah, she went back with her, told her dad, I'll be back. You know, if you need any help, just let me know, blah, blah, blah. You just, you want the help. I'll find you, you know, kind of thing. Well, then she left before her, I'm just going to say her girlfriend, uh, basically says, you know, we'll take you back. No offense, buts, but you got to come now. No going back. You are tied to me. You're supposed to stay here. So when she wanted to go back to help, that's why I think, you know, Hmm. That's I, that's just my speculation. I think she died because of that. She wanted to help her family, even though she knew she couldn't. And her girlfriend basically took it out. Did what she needed to do. I tried. I gotta watch it again. But I could have sworn she said, "Wait, you're still alive," or something like that. Or, or but her, or if, 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 even if she didn't say that, her facial expression was kind of like, "Oh, I know you," and then a little bit like, "I like know shock. you. I can't believe you're killing me." Yeah. Like, oh no, what are you doing? Like, but like, she's like a freaky world class assassin, assassin and that's how easy she gets taken out that easily. Like, I don't know. Sometimes that kind of stuff day. bothers me in writing. Yeah, but you know, the thing is about this season, they're trying to make it a combination of season two and season one, and these flashbacks to me have been. Brutal. They're getting worse. Yeah. If you like, guys, if if you guys watched, go ahead, dude. Well, I like I appreciate the fact that he's not on the island still in the flashbacks. He's in Hong Kong, and that's a cool story. But like, there's so much of it. So like, what is this really adding to the story? And let's be honest, no one really cares about Tommy Merlin. He died as like a good riddance. <laughs> right. Well, and. The the flashbacks. If you guys did watch, have you? If you guys are, you know, at least got the first, uh, um, first uh, season, two seasons in you, um, you guys know that the the flashbacks are, you know, they do it all the time. Uh, it'll be flashback to the island. They'll flashback to the boat. They'll flashback to, you know, where him and Sarah were were leaving on the yacht, uh, just to go. Um, I mean, but now it's like. Uh, you know, 65% of the whole show is all flashback. And you're like, dude, really? Can you play the show what's going on now? You know, it's just... And I understand why they do it, because they have to give the backstory. But Jesus Christ, there has to be so many flashbacks? That's the problem. Yeah. It's like, dude, come on, please. The flashbacks, I feel like, if they're not adding something to the immediate story or at least something that what we could say oh this is gonna be valuable later on let me stick that in my back pocket mm -hmm. then this is just skip it it's like it's like they're just trying to put filler in there and a lot of these scenes that they a lot of these scenes they're showing it's like all right what what's the point of this like what what are you trying to get at like they try to create tension with like the whole Tommy Merlin thing. Like, oh my God, is he gonna shoot him? Obviously, he does it because he's alive when he comes back. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make sense for the most part. It really, I mean, doesn't. I almost feel like I almost feel like let's just go back to him doing um, 
half naked push ups. Almost rather watch ra rather watch that. Uh, <laughs> I didn't mind it when it was part of the you know part of the backstory and 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 whatnot and everything. But I mean, if it's just him working out just because that's you know they come into his his place where everything's at, and the every, every time they come into that scene, he's always working out with his shirt off. Eh, that's gonna get really old really fast. Now, if it's something that he's doing, so you know, if him and Digger are working out, or him and <coughs> him and Sarah at the time were working out together, of course, you know, then that's you know something that's actually you know they're actually getting into the scene or actually starting a a monologue. But it just right off the bat, you go into his, I want to say his layer. You go into his layer, and all of a sudden, you know, you wouldn't think about what's he doing. Oh, he's working out again. Oh, guess what, ladies? Here's your show. Yeah, that's that's all they need. They need to have like a shirtless wrestling scene between, you know, uh, the Arrow and and uh, and Digger. That'd be so funny. <laughs> just just like a little like they got wrestling. That's wow. all they need. They, they, I wouldn't talk about it all that shit. Hey, the ladies will love it. That's what they're waiting for. No, but right. um, so hey, they want to get more women viewers, but lose all their man viewers. Got it. The 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 viewers that are actually keeping them afloat. The male <laughs> viewers. I don't know. I would say the viewership of Arrow is probably predominantly female because it's more of a soap opera than an action show. Especially this this season, but they're starting. I don't know. About I'm enjoying 45. the season. Huh. It's about sixty-five forty-five, or yeah. uh, sixty-five thirty-five, give-ish, take-ish, um, to men versus women. Uh, the first yeah. season, the first season was, uh, I think it was, it was really closer to fifty-fifty, um, but there was it was like fifty-five forty-five, in 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 way of a woman viewer, the women viewers, because he every episode he was had his shirt off for at least half yeah. the episode, so of course they're gonna be like. Ah. I wish my husband had a six pack like that. Oh my god! And then look over, <laughs> you fat boy. Oh gosh, let's talk about Felicity Smoke, dude. Not mm. even reminding me, like she went from like totally swooning over him to being over him. And I actually wanted them to get together, I'm like, cause I'm tired of him being this whiny bitch. Like, dude, she's a hot chick. She's smart. That's even sexier. You know, she's geeky, dude. Please. Both of you, because he's just like the whole thing about Arrow is like he's this dark, brooding character. Like he's just got so much angst and so detached from the world. And everything's like so serious with it. Oh, I can never love again. And like, Shut up. And then Felicity comes <laughs> in and goes, hi. Oh, yeah. And then like at the end of the season, he's like, oh, you know, what's up, Felicity? You know, trying to get with her. Gave her a kiss, an actual kiss at the end of the season. And then all of a sudden, season uh, the next season comes up, and you're like, "I thought they were getting together," and they're like on two ends of the two opposite ends of the spectrum again. It's like really, yeah. It's, it's what stupid. happened? Where where did the 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 breakup go? Where did where did what the fuck? You don't know what happened because they don't say nothing. They're really close, and now they're just team members again. They had the you know the off it. season. It's, they it's, had their fling, and they just thought it wouldn't work. I get it's because of their their encounters with death and whatever, and it made him realize that anyone that's close to him has their life at risk. But let her make that choice. But that that let that choice was that already choice. made in season one. Yeah, that choice was made was... as soon as when she when when he had her help. Okay, before she knew what he was. Okay, and he needed help with tech, with the computer. That's what she helped him with. When she found out who he was, she he gave her a choice, or he she said, "Let me choose." See, I choose to stay with you because you're a friend, or whatever she said exactly. Yeah, she already yep. made it. Don't just sit there, keep on doing it, bringing old old shit. BFT says that that uh she upgraded to Superman. You know what? I do not Flash, like this. Thank dude. you. The dude that took over the Quinn Company. I cannot stand him. I cannot stand his character. He's so smug, and ah. Uh, he pisses me off. He actually might be piss might piss me off more than the 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 girl that took over. Hey, what's up with all these freaking assholes taking over his company? <laughs> Every time Oliver's about to get it back, 
some other asshole comes up. And Felicity is a big reason why all this shit went down down the drain. Cause she let she show she told the guy how to hack their own network. It's like, oh, you should try doing this instead of that. Yeah. I hope they don't hook up. That's something that's something that it's I don't know. It, it's something that I, I I really don't know if they're trying to write it to, in a way saying like, oh, Felicity doesn't really know what she's saying to this guy. But through the any episodes and any seasons that's already happened. Felicity is one of the smartest people on the show. So yeah. she's sitting there going, well, why don't you just try this? Come on, dude, really? If you're going to actually down it, and then the arrow needs to do something to her. I'm not saying kill her. I'm not saying do whatever. But if she basically gave, gave up the, 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 the network and the security to what the arrow is doing, later, bitch. That's just I really me. hope. That's just me. Yeah, I really hope Felicity doesn't hook up with this dude for a number of reasons, but it's just she needs to come back. That you got, you know, Diggs, you got Oliver, you got Roy, you got Felicity. That's that's an awesome group. They need each other. And the thing is, I see this group falling apart because Diggs is a daddy now. He really can't be parading about. Yeah, you know? baby mom will be whooping his ass. Yeah, and I think he started. Mm-hmm. He, he's really loyal to Oliver, but you know, I, I think he's starting to see that his priorities have to shift. Roy, something might happen there. He might do his own thing, you know. I think Roy's or, gonna stick around. I hope he does. Just because but, like, of his sister. Yeah, see, Fia. We gotta see what happened with Fia because we Wasn't know that she she's leaving though. Thea? Yeah, she was leaving town at the end of that last uh, last season. She was supposed to be leaving town to get clear her head, and then she was supposed to come back, but she never did. But now we saw that she's with she's training with her daddy, and all of a sudden she's like a martial arts expert in a matter of what a few months. Well, well if, okay. Well, come on, you think about it. Who's her daddy? Yeah, I know, but still, yeah. it's like you know. I mean, she's finding two people at once with, with sparring, and she's like kicking their asses. And I'm like, okay, I guess. Well, you don't know how much time has actually passed. She could have been there for ten years. And that's something. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, I think, uh, you know, between season two and three, you could say it was safely a few months because the way people acted, the whole thing that went down when all the criminals got loose and the. Uh, Everything went to, you know, to shit in Starling City. You could tell that was like, people were still, that wound is still open. And um, also, Oliver had lost his company and they was trying to get it back in the beginning of season three. So, yeah, not that much time passed by. So, I don't know, what do you guys think in the chat? Uh, you know, fall TV season is, is crazy. So much good television. I, I don't. I, I don't get to watch that much TV. So this is like overwhelming. How much quality television there is? It's distracting. Right. But uh, it's going crazy right now. <laughs> Time to get up. Do. Time to get up, Dad. Get your ass up. Bring me outside. But uh, you know, I heard her say it. I think uh, this will be a really good season. It might end up being better than. Like so far, season two is my favorite. Season one, not so much. Uh, so I think this season, season three of Arrow, will be better than the first one. Mm-hmm. I mean, season one does what it's supposed to do. It's it sets the stage, but it's kind of a slow burn. It's a little brutal. <laughs> but Ages of Shield, I, I'm I'm most excited out of the those last few shows outside of The Walking Dead and of course Doctor Who. I'm really excited about Ages of Shield because. We realized that uh, Sky's father is still alive. And, like, there's so many things connecting with each other. Like, you realize how interwoven everything is, you know, and everything's just unraveling. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Obi? I know you're tired, too. I, yeah, dude, I'm, I'm losing it. Um, we'll, we'll start I re- wrapping it. I really, I really think that, um, like you said, um, the, the uh, Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D., Cat or uh, cast, uh, the Agents of Shield, uh, is g- is going to be good. I uh, like I said, I really want to see what Ward's going to do, what they're going to do with him. Um, 
and want to see what's going on with uh, more of what's going on with uh, with uh, what's his name? Who's the boss? Um, oh, that's uh, uh, Tony DeVito. Uh, Tony, Tony DeVito, right? The bo- the the director of Shield now. Um, <laughs> I'm making a joke. Who's the boss? Come on. Yeah, got it. Um, so. But, uh, you know, just to see what's happening with him because now he's actually flipping out and actually doing all the symbols, the alien language Col- and all that. Col- um, I'd like to see what's going on with him. Um, but, like, uh, the, with Arrow, I, like Yogi said, the, the second season is by far the best for me. Um, if season three will stick up with what they're doing now and continue it and actually make more, um, maybe even bring in a new character uh, from, from Marvel uh, would be nice. Um, just because, I mean, they, they're, inter- they introduced to Flash. The Flash has got his own series now. Tony I mean, Danza, I'm sorry. Tony Danza. I'm like, yeah, you were, you were like way the fuck off anyway. You're like Danny DeVito. <laughs> no, he's a little yeah, short. Yeah, I, I, I combined twins. Tony Danza with Danny DeVito. That's how tired I am. Danny, Danny DeVito. <laughs> Tony DeVito, didn't you say? Yeah, anyway. But, uh, <laughs> a lot of things, um, yeah, Sleepy Hollow was another one. I, I'm not caught up with that, so I'm, I don't think we're even going to talk about it uh, much. Um, but uh, with what's going on with the new, with getting with the 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 day of the judgment, the res, you know, not the resurrection, but the uh, um, Armageddon, and and make the four horsemen actually uh, 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 actually accomplishing what they knew to accomplish, but getting sidetracked throughout the uh, the season. So uh, I really hope it's going to be good. Like I said, we'll we'll brush up on all these episodes, and hopefully we can and and hit this, um, hit this hit this part of our fall TV shows next week. I'm sure uh, Yogi will put one in because we got some bunch of things that we need to talk about next week still. So, but um, if you guys have, I'm any happy. Sh- I'm happy to see that that the show has legs. The Sleepy Hollow. Mm-hmm. There's got so in, many different in. directions I can go in with it, and I like it. Yeah, I was. I, I'm happy to see that like it really has enough substance in there and. Enough potential to go on a few seasons, so definitely it's a fun show. It's, if, it's, it's got a little bit of a feel to, of like supernatural to it too. Well, since uh, now I'll just make this then. Uh, if you guys have any shows that you like to watch, okay, so we can actually hit them up next week. Leave us a voicemail, one two zero six four one five four nine eight seven. Leave us a voicemail and say the show you like, why you like it, or even an email, mail at geekyantics dot net. Um, let us know. We want to talk about, of course, our all our fall favorite shows, and just to just to have more to talk about. Um, if you leave us a voicemail, excuse me. Whew. If you leave us a voicemail, <laughs> send us a mail. Um, maybe we'll uh, we'll pick one of the comments and uh, have the have that person on the show next week. Maybe. Ah, we'll see. Oh, but we do want to keep the conversation going, ladies and gentlemen. With everything that we do, we do want to make sure that you guys hit geeky hit up geekyantics.net to see any and all our podcasts, any of our you know anything that uh, any of our content providers are actually writing for us or uh, putting out the content that we we know and love. But you guys can show your 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 thanks and your support uh, to 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 geekyantics.net because we love it. So Horseplay Live is everywhere you can listen and to download awesome podcasts, including allgames.com. Woo woo. Please take a few minutes to thumbs up, favorite, subscribe, and share. Even better, we love to reviews and comments. It's quick, really easy, and it really helps us out. Thanks to everyone who's been promoting our content and faithfully promoting our content. We love you very much. Thank you very much as well. Love you. Anyway. If you hate reading or listening, we do video as well. Check us out on YouTube and Twitch, and that's both youtube.com forward slash geeky antics and twitch.tv forward slash geeky antics as well. Big shout outs to our other Thursday night f- uh, flagship show over at geekyantics.net, a gaming death podcast, the gaming death podcast. They'll be over at Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash gaming death every Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern time and hosted right here on Geeky Antics channel 2. But it's right before our live show, Horseplay Live, which is, I said before, normally at 11 p.m. Thursday nights, Eastern Time. <laughs> so, um, but you guys can peep out their website at gamingdeath.com. Um, also, Monday nights, and this is every other week, you guys can check out Pixelated Pints with Fred Rojas and Jefe 
um, uh, on their Pixelated Pints YouTube channel at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 Pacific. Uh, now, the show is a bi-weekly schedule. Do we have this schedule on, uh, are they going to be on this coming Monday or next? I think it's going to be next Monday. We have the schedule up on geekyantics.net, so you can see the exact schedule. For all scheduling needs, please go to geekyantics.net forward slash schedule. Word. Word. We do invite you guys as well. On Sunday, we have two shows. I think we only have two. Two shows right on Sunday. Um, we are looking for more people to, of course, join us on the Sundays because Sundays are a little bare. They are. Starting at 9. What am I doing? No, starting at 2 p.m., we have an apostolic outlook with Reverend Ted Tarr. You guys know it's my dad. Uh, he does. He loves doing it. Uh, he is very, this is from him, he is very, very thankful and and very pleased that everybody's just showing him so much love on something that he just really loves to do. So from from Reverend Tar, uh, he really wants to thank you and uh, tells you everybody he's he loves it. He's he's so happy. I've never seen this happy in a while. So, um, but other than that, uh, at 9 p.m. on Sunday as well is the Sunday dose with myself will be one x two and Mud. Uh, that's at MUD721. You guys can check us out on the Sunday Dose. We have rotating guests and hosts. Of course, we talk a, little, a lot about the Dawngate competitive, uh, the Dawngate and the competitive gaming scene along with MOBAs <coughs> or any any other uh, uh, gaming scene. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Ooh. And of course, we talk about a lot of random shit that we just can't come up with anyway. Like Tony Danza. Yeah, Tony Danza, exactly. <laughs> or Tony DeVito. <laughs> Tony DeVito. Well, you guys can also check out our friends <laughs> at Walker, at the Walker Stalkers. Cat and Fox, a worthy opponent, 42 level 1. Gaming History 101, the B Team Podcast, R9 Cast, Knuckle Baller Radio, Zombie Cast, Agents of Shield Cast, the Bean Casts, and the Sega Nerds, all on the, the allgames.com network and or gang or the other places where geeky goodness can be found. Let them know Yogi and Obi sent you from Horseplay. Uh, speaking of all games, guys, we are very honored. Um, I'm, I'm very honored. I know Yogi is too with everything that we do with these guys uh, to be amidst some of the great groups and, and, and actual podcasters and streamers with allgames.com. You guys are awesome. You guys rock. Thank you very much. Um, question mark guy, do you have any plugs you'd like to plug? He's still silent, so Yogi, you can uh, go ahead if you'd like to. Yeah, so don't forget to check out uh, Timey Wimey Tea Time, TWTT for short. Saturday is at 12 p.m. noon. That's noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. I knew. 5 p.m. in London, 7 p.m. in Bucharest, and I think 4 p.m. in Madrid. So we're trying to cover all the time zones for you guys. We're live right here on the Geeky Antics Twitch channel and on allgames.com. You only like, got live, notes. live. You only got 19 more time zones to go if you're going to cover them all. Oh, yeah. We covered a, a majority of them. Four. Uh, yeah, and it, and we're still doing the, the giveaway um, for the TWTT. It's the Soft Kitty Song Contest. So if you just go over to geekyantics.net for such giveaways, you can see the latest reward that's been unlocked. It's uh, three Hearthstone pillows. We'll be closing off the submission period soon. So we want to get those last-minute entries in. Before it's too late, and then uh, probably in about uh, three to four weeks, they're probably going to open up the voting, or two to four weeks, I would say. Speaking of giveaways, uh, we want to say grats again to Racing John 2010 for winning the Payday 2 giveaway. Um, oh, yeah. It was a long time, uh, and, and guys, uh, this is all my fault. I'll take full responsibility for this. Uh, the giveaway was a long time. That will never happen again. If we're gonna give it away, we're gonna. It's gonna be like two weeks max. <laughs> we did like it was like a month and a half. <laughs> so again, sorry for that, guys. But congratulations to Racing John. Um, I know he's in. He should be in here just watching uh, for that. And uh, hope to see you in game, man. Word. If you, if you are listening to us on AllGames.com. The Dead Pixel Live Power Ranking Show is up next, followed by the B-Team Podcast at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Be sure to hang out and chat by clicking on the live or chat button. And just uh, 
Just hang out. Chit chat and tell them how much you love them. <laughs> Yogi, you got anything else? Sums it up. No, uh, we do have a new show on the network. Uh, mm. It's uh, the, the details forthcoming. But it's gonna be a very casual show with uh, Ali Kennedy from Forty Two Level One and Starling City Radio. It's uh, dedicated to Star Wars. Uh, so far, it's tentatively called Star Wars Rebels Cast Podcast. I think we'll come up with something a little more, more clever. But uh, yeah, so details are coming. I think Friday night's going to be the time zone for it. So before Retro Friday, that's it. Sweet. So from from myself, will be one X two and Yogi Zilla and Horseplay and just everybody on on gang. This is Horseplay Live, and we really appreciate you guys coming out and just hanging out with us. Uh, understanding about the uh, the Twitch issues with last night, and we couldn't do it on Thursday. But thank you guys for hanging out. I'm Obi One X two. It's over there, Yogi Zilla. Don't forget to tweet us, guys. Send us a email, voicemail. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. Pee pee touch. Time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want to show me that pee pee touch? Oh, I, I like some pee pee touch now. Oh. So wrong. That's a bad pee pee touch. Mm, it's pee pee touch time now. <laughs> I don't want to edit this any more than I have to. Just go. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. <laughs> Sorry, guys, if we don't dance. It's, uh,.